Welcome to Computer Science 320 2014 Winter 2 Midterm 2 Practice Problem Screencast. We are doing the intro to Problem 5, and hopefully this will be pretty familiar to you by this point, because we saw it on our previous midterm, and we saw it on a post-midterm assignment. But I'll go ahead and read through it anyway. So this is the high price of plausible deniability. You're solving the interval scheduling problem except minimizing the number of jobs performed rather than maximizing it. Usually with interval scheduling we get a bunch of jobs. Each job has a start time and a finish time or a start time and a duration. Both turn out to be the same. And uh, we want to pick as many jobs as possible while ensuring that we never pick two jobs that conflict with each other. But now we're minimizing the number of jobs we do. So it says, in particular, we define the conflict set of a job to be the set of all jobs that conflict with that job's time range. Note that the conflict set of a job always includes the job itself. So a job, obviously, whatever its time range is, it overlaps its own time range, so it would be in there. This is a little different from the midterm. This was that definition that confused people a bit. Your solution should minimize the number of jobs performed while still performing exactly one job from each conflict set. And note that we consider two jobs times to conflict even if the start time of one job is equal to the finish time of the other. That is, even if they overlap at only one point. So that's just a greater than or equal to versus greater than kind of thing. So the unnecessary flavor text is that your boss has just given you a list of jobs to perform. Each job has a start time and an end time. You can never do more than one job at a time. You're kind of tired. So you'd like to do as few jobs as possible, but you can't just do nothing or you'll get fired. So you want to find a list of the smallest number of jobs you can do so that every other job conflicts with at least one of the jobs you are doing. So you've always got an excuse for your boss. If your boss says, walks in and sees you just sitting around and says, why aren't you doing this job over here? You can say, well, I'm not doing this job because uh, it conflicts with this other job that's on my list of jobs to do. And your boss has to say, oh, well, OK, that makes sense. And that's why we're choosing exactly one from each conflict set. So we can't choose more than one, because then we get two conflicting jobs. That's not allowed in either version of the problem. We can't choose less than one. That wasn't stated in the previous version, but we were maximizing the number of jobs. So of course we wouldn't pick less than one from some conflict set. That would be picking none, and in that case we could add a job and have a better solution. So we want to pick exactly one from each conflict set while still minimizing the number of jobs.